I will have the red player spend one gold to place another cube on the attack action and send out my infantry and airship, which would be one time point. And I'm hoping to eliminate these zombies. I have to use the yellow's rail because it's two away and my infantry couldn't get there on my rails. So it's going to cost me an additional time point for a total of two. But that will still allow me to go again before the old ones. We're attacking that zombie with three health with our large stack of infantry and our airship. We have no artillery or armored cars there. We do have infantry, but we'll take a wound and lose one sanity. We have the numbers, so losing an infantry or two, while not ideal, will not put us in a bad situation. We lost a sanity, that takes us down to three. Remember, we started with four, thanks to Count Yago. And our infantry inflicted its first wound on the zombies. We will continue to fight. And the zombies will take another wound from the infantry. Excellent. And that'll leave us with one successful attack left to take the zombies out. Can we get it right here? And we can. An excellent, excellent attack by this large group of infantry on these zombies. That wound will come off. Everybody will return back to the barracks victorious. And we will gain a token worth one victory point. We'll get some tracks further into the outback with the yellow player, extending our range so we are able to reach these really far away old ones much easier. And that'll cost us two time points. Have the blue player pick up that iron and we have resources to sell. And that'll let the blue player go again. And we can drop that in our warehouse and we'll go ahead and prep and sell off two of those to make some gold because we're going to need to replenish our infantry troops. And that means the red player will get to go one more time before the old ones activate. I don't have enough gold to use my attack action again. Don't have enough to buy many troops. There's nothing really available to mine. Don't have the resources to build tracks, so I'll go ahead and prep for the coming battles and bring everyone back to the headquarters and that will activate the old ones on a non-illuminated space. So we'll see if the Shogoth will move any closer. Will not with card number one, and will not with card number two. But a revelation is coming, and this will be our first level three revelation. Reveal the old one in the lowest numbered hex and draw six cards for its movement but each player can take two gold, and that will be very helpful for purchasing troops. The lowest numbered hex is our final level two old one here in hex number 28. And look at that. What an amazing amount of luck. This kangaroo means that we don't have to draw six cards for its movement because it just hops away. And every player will receive two additional gold. We still have to draw the two regular movement cards, and the Shogoth remains still and stays in place. The red player is up next. We do have all these red level threes that we need to reveal and start attacking because we're coming to the point where we're going to turn that corner. Remember, once everyone reaches or passes this space, that's the end, so we have to start making attacks. The red player has three gold, so we will get our armored car back at the cost of three gold and have a more diverse fighting force now. And that'll allow the red player to go again before the old ones. The blue player does not have an airship, or do we want a lot of infantry available? I like the idea of having extra infantry available, so I will purchase two infantry units to build my forces back up. Again, that action only costs one and will allow us to go again. That way we can launch attacks before the old ones get to move. And because of yellow's ability to go twice, if they use a one point action, we'll return everyone to the headquarters and allow yellow to go 
one more time. And we will begin by attacking that Shogoth that is close to our tracks. It's not on the tracks, so I can't take my train, but I can take my artillery and my infantry. And thanks to Professor Guillaume, that will reduce our time point expenditure down to one. The Shogoth is one off of our rail system for the yellow player, so the infantry and artillery can get there with no problem. This Shogoth has six health, so even if I don't take it out, I hope I can do at least two or three damage to it. Now the artillery will do one, and it will do one to us. We've at least inflicted one wound, so it was worth the attack. And I almost forgot to spend my time unit for that attack. We take a wound, but we don't have to worry too much right now because Franz Newman can send a eliminated unit back to the barracks. And we continue to battle. The armored car isn't there. And we don't have an airship there. Double blank. The infantry will land another wound, but we'll take one and lose one sanity. I've reached my goal of at least inflicting two or three wounds. The infantry will take another hit. We'll lose our first sanity. That infantry unit will return to the barracks, thanks to Franz Newman. We have an empty deck, so I need to shuffle. Our airship would have done one, but all we're going to do is take a wound. We'll place that wound on the infantry, continue the battle, and we will lose a sanity taking us to one remaining. The infantry will inflict another wound, but we will take a wound and lose another sanity. The Shogoth is halfway to defeat. We'll place the wound on the artillery, take our last sanity off. I don't want to risk taking another sanity. Since both troops are wounded, they would both be eliminated. We'll choose this as a great moment to withdraw from the conflict. I will have the blue player spend a gold to launch another attack and we'll send infantry and armored cars. And the attack will be in this location. I want to reveal this final level one because it's on the lowest numbered hex. That way if one of the revelation cards reveals the old one in the lowest numbered hex, it'll start revealing those level threes for us without us having to go there and do a blind attack. So here we're dealing with a zombie. And that'll cost a blue two because of infantry and armored cars both going. And the attack against this two health zombie begins with two blanks. The armored car will give us one successful attack. And we need one more. And the infantry will make this a quick victory. Another successful campaign against a low level monster. And we'll get one victory point for the blue player. We'll have the red player launch an attack at that Shogoth and we'll go all out against it so we can try and take it out before the old ones go. That way they will not have any old ones revealed to move because their first stop will be in a non-illuminated space. This attack is going to cost us two time points. And because we cannot reach this location without using the yellow player's rails, it's going to be a third time point, which will cost us quite a bit for the red player. But if we can get that Shogoth taken out, it's worth it. And also remember the red player has the cards where the armored cars can take three damage before elimination and the airships can take three before elimination. So we should be able to draw quite a bit. And we have four sanity. So I think our sanity would run out before our troops. Let's go after this Shogoth. And I spoke too soon because we don't have trains there. We'll take a wound and lose a sanity. We'll start off by wounding our infantry and losing a sanity. Hopefully gain some success here soon. The infantry will inflict a wound and we will take another wound. We need two more to take this Shogoth out. We'll place some of this damage on our armored car that can take up to three, keeping our large stack of troops for an end game attack. All right, Shogoth. Oh no, we don't have artillery there and we're going to take a wound. We'll place that one on the armored car also. We can't put any more on it, so we'll have to start losing infantry if we take wounds. Oh, what a bad time not to have artillery. A double wound. That would have killed it. Well, the airship will land an attack, but we'll take a wound. We're almost there. 
We'll wound a soldier and that'll take one out. We only need one more successful attack. It's not going to occur there. Oh man, another artillery. And we take a wound and lose a sanity. Our infantry is still three soldiers deep, so we'll keep going. And we only need one. Oh, and it's the train again. This battle is really going the distance. There we go. The armored car will inflict a final wound and our airship will take its first hit. This will be an equal split between red and yellow. They each inflicted three wounds. The airship would have taken a wound, but that is not anything to worry about. A very successful foray against the Shogoth. Destroyed it. The Shogoth was worth six victory points, so we'll give three to the red and three to the yellow. I feel like the time expenditure was definitely worth it there. The old ones will move on to a non-illuminated space with zero old ones showing, so they will not move. But they get to go again, and we're going to get a level three revelation. And reveal the old one in the lowest number hex and draw six cards for its movement. We're going to see our first level three old one. The lowest numbered hex would be right there at 35. And we're going to see a zombie. We lucked out there. This zombie only has five health and generally doesn't move much, but we have to draw six cards for its individual movement. And I spoke too soon, as always. The zombie will move on the very first card. Direction four, counterclockwise. Direction four is straight south. Both of these farms are five away. This farm is six away. So the zombie will move on its very first card one to the south, and we will continue. And the zombie will not move this time. Card number three sees the zombie remaining still. Number four, the same result. Five, excellent. And six, great. No more movement from that thing. Now we draw the two regular movement cards. No movement. And no movement. Very, very good. Just as predicted, the zombies don't move very often. Out of those eight cards we had to draw, it only moved once, and it's on our rail line. But trains are poor against zombies. It's on our rail line, and it's yellow's turn. Before we make that attack, we're going to recruit some help, because that one time point will allow us to go again before the old ones, and we'll get Donald McDonald that will allow us to take two iron, two coal, and two gold. And we'll use Mr. McDonald right away and get two of each. And that will bring the yellow player's warehouse to the exact same levels that they started with. Let's draw our replacement. Capena Alika. If your farm is attacked, you can defend it by taking an immediate attack action. We're going to go after that zombie that's on our rail line. That'll cost us one gold because of the cube that was already there. And we'll go ahead and take everybody. We'll even take the trains because it can at least absorb damage for us. We're on the rail line, or the zombies on the rail line, and Professor Guillaume will cut our time use down to one, which means yellow won't have to wait too long to go again. And we'll go after this zombie with five health. And the goal is to take it out here because damage does not stay on the zombie. So yellow has quite the task here, but we have infantry and artillery with us, and this is a wonderful start. We have a train there, we have infantry there, the zombies do nothing. Dare I say, great start, and we continue. We don't have an armored car there, and we're going to take a wound and lose one sanity. The zombies fought right back. The battle wages is on, and we're going to get a double blank. Another one. Their artillery is going to land a wound, and we're going to take no ill effects. Two more to go, yellow. And that is how you finish it. A train and an infantry. And that is the end of that zombie. And that is how you fight a battle against these old ones. Just taking them out. Yellow, earning another two victory points. I don't think we have to worry about yellow's victory point total. Got to concentrate on blue 
and then getting rid of a few more. The old ones are going to take their turn with no revealed old ones showing. And moving on to a non-illuminated space means they do nothing. Taking us to the blue player, who will take this opportunity to mine. And because we're getting close to the end, the blue player will use the red and yellow player's rail lines to mine this phosphate. The mining action costs one and the Reuse of two rail lines will be two more, bringing the old ones onto an illuminated space. That we have to deal with here, reveal the old one in the lowest numbered hex and draw six cards again. All right, let's see what we're gonna get. The lowest numbered hex is 39, and we're getting the big guy. Cthulhu has arrived. Requires 15 wounds to take it out, and is worth 12 victory points. Gotta take him out. We don't want the old ones getting 12 at the end of the game. How much is he going to move? Gotta draw six cards for Cthulhu's movement. He doesn't move on the first one. He does not move on the second one. No movement on the third. But he will move on card number four. Direction three, counterclockwise. Direction three is off to the southeast. This sheep farm is the closest. He would move in direction three, which will not benefit Cthulhu. So we'll go counterclockwise till we get here, and that is one step closer. And now he's only three away and before he was four away. Card number five, we'll see movement again, direction one counterclockwise. One would be back up to the north, so that's not going to happen. So we'll use the counterclockwise motion. Starting up here, coming around, and that is no closer. So we're going to move directly to the south, right on the blue's rail line. And the sixth and final card, we'll see movement once again, direction six and clockwise. Six is the wrong direction, so we'll work our way around clockwise. Six, and that'll work us around. That's no closer, so we're going directly to the south. Now things are getting dangerous. He's getting close to a port. Now the two regular movement cards. We'll see no movement and movement once again. Bad news for us as we lose another farm to the blight, but he does stay on the rail line. It's the yellow player's turn and we need to attack but before we do so, let's clear up our spaces so we don't have to pay gold to attack. We can save that for a desperate attack later. And that will allow the yellow player to go again before the old ones, bringing up red. We'll have the red help blue prep for worst case scenario and recruit help and gain Ivan Karpov. If your port is attacked, inflict two damage at the start of combat on each attacker and we'll give Ivan to the blue player. It costs the red player one, and we'll get to go again. Everyone will shift over, and we'll see if we get a card that can help us in this situation. Yvette Kia. Take four iron from the supply. Eh, don't really need that right now. We don't have much choice. We don't have any gold available. So I will have the red prep for a future attack. Bring everyone back to the headquarters. And that will bring us to the yellow player. The yellow player has artillery and trains, which are the two things that are good against Cthulhu. So we are definitely going to attack. So we will attack. We'll send our infantry too to help absorb some attacks. Cthulhu is on the rail line. This is going to be a costly attack for time points. It's only going to cost us one initially, thanks to Professor Guillaume. But to get our troops and train there, we need to use two different players' rail lines. So that's going to cost us two more points for a total of three, meaning the yellow player won't get many more actions. But we can't let Cthulhu reach the port. Before Cthulhu gets to the port, if we are able to inflict at least 13 wounds, the final two will come off thanks to Ivan Karpov that's with the blue player. The yellow player begins the attack with infantry, artillery, and a train. Here we go. An awful, 
awful start. We have no airship and we're going to take two wounds. Place one on the infantry, one on the train. Continue the attack. Another terrible result. Armored car and a wound to us. Place another wound on the train. We have the strongest troops against Cthulhu and are failing miserably. All right. Oh, well, at least we're going to land two, but he's going to do two more to us. Yellow lands the first two wounds, but we're going to take two more. We'll place one on the artillery, one on these troops, which means they will go... Nope, I'm just going to eliminate them because I think the train and artillery are more important. So I'll wait to use Franz Newman with one of them. Give them another quick mix and continue with the battle. And we will lose one sanity, which is our first sanity loss. Ouch. Two more wounds to us and two more to Cthulhu, making the total now four. And I will put both wounds on the infantry. That's it for my infantry troops. Let's continue with the assault. We are going to land another wound and take another wound. You can use the additional player discs to represent five wounds. And I'll take a third wound on my train. I'll use Franz Newman to return the train to the barracks and I will withdraw. That way I can still use yellow to wage another attack, hopefully. I don't think I have time before Cthulhu would make it to the port, so I will continue the attack with my artillery. And take that chance. And I should have kept the train, but I didn't take a wound, and I don't have an airship there. Sandy loss leaves me with one remaining. And the next attack is a double blank, followed by... Oh, gosh, the train. I should have kept the train, and I'll lose another sanity. And it was a 50-50 shot. They're both good against Cthulhu. We're now out of sanity, and I think I've pushed my luck enough anyway. Yeah, let's get out of here. We'll withdraw and hope we get another shot at him with the yellow player. Those five wounds remain. Cthulhu will draw two cards for movement. All right. Oh. He's going to move direction three, but he's only one step away from the farm, so he'll definitely go that way. Blighting another farm. And a very devastating result. Cthulhu will move to the blue port and will trigger a do or die battle for the game. 